Hello, it's Kirsten. Welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. So I do want to do a quick update as it's the last day of June today. It is the last day of the Make Your Myth Taker readathon. Now I had decided to do three character prompts, goddess, monarch, and fairy. However, this didn't quite go to plan. I did finish my goddess path within the first week which I had wanted, but the monarch path took me slightly longer and the fairy path went completely out the window. I decided that instead of doing the full character path for the fairy path, that I would do two of the prompts. Instead, I ended up DNFing one of the books because that was Tales of the Beetle Bard by JK Rowling, and given everything that's happening, I was not comfortable reading one of her books, and so I DNF'd that one. However, the last prompt was to read something outside of my comfort zone and that's My Dark Vanessa. Now I did start this yesterday and I read the first hundred pages but I don't think I'm going to get this finished today by any means so technically I wouldn't have finished anything for the fairy path so I'm leaving this Make Your Myth Taker readathon as a goddess turned monarch which isn't that bad, two out of three, not bad. With regards to this book and how I'm finding it so far it's difficult. This is a book about a woman who had a relationship with her English teacher when she was 15 years old and there is a lot that comes with this book and even the first hundred pages is very graphic. It shocked me as to how graphic this actually is. I wasn't really expecting that. We have a dual timeline going on. So we have her in her present day and then we have her when she's 15 years old. You see the two timelines and I think this is expertly written. I love the way that you're seeing this all through her eyes at the age of 15 and her not realising how she's been manipulated and feeling like she's in charge, feeling that she's powerful but in reality she's not and you as the reader know that she isn't but she can't quite piece that together. And then you see her as an adult trying to deal with the effects of every that she went through and her believing that this wasn't abuse, that this was a relationship that she felt like she was powerful, like he loved her and that this was what it was and it's very hard to read but at the same time even though it's so chilling it is so expertly written that I just did not want to put this book down and yeah. I will say please go into this being cautious, do look up the trigger warnings, but it is good and I am still going to be reading it. I think it's very impactful. This is a book talking about a topic that I haven't seen spoken about this way before. I mean obviously there may be other books but this is the first book that I've read like it and I do believe it's been done very well in a way to make you realise and understand where she's coming from but also as a reader realising how despicable he is as a person to be doing this to her. Even in her adult life he still has this control over her and it's, yeah, it, it's chilling. Chilling is the right word for this book. On a bit more of lighter news, I did finish Lady Smoke by Laura Sebastian. This was my buddy read with Aofi from Little Book Elf. We both read Ash Princess separately, we both loved it, we both gave it four stars and then realised we'd both done this and so we decided to buddy read the second book and uh, it's been really good. Now if you don't know this story is about a princess whose kingdom was overtaken, she was treated terribly and now she is rising up against them and this second book is all about putting that into action and I really enjoyed it. We have assassination attempts, we have refugees that are being treated awfully and we also have our love triangle which is carrying on from the first book and I really love it. I think it is well done especially because I love Sorin and Aofi loves Blaze, so I think when you've got a love triangle where we both love different characters, then you know it's been done well. Really good book. It's still a four star, but I did enjoy it more than the first book, just because that first chapter, it grips you, and this ending is so good. Like, it's ah, it's a really good ending. I love what's happened, and I can't talk about it because spoilers, but really enjoyable read. That's the start of my week. I don't have any actual reading plans. I do have a July TBR but it's pretty flexible this month which is nice. A nice break from June because that was too strict for myself. I couldn't do it. But for now I need to get to work so I'll catch up with you later. I've just finished My Dark Vanessa this morning and it was an amazing read. 
very impactful and there is trigger warnings for grooming, sexual abuse and other things so please look those up before going into this book. However, I think Katie Russell does it in a really good way. She does tackle these difficult subjects but in a way that makes you question it as you're reading it as well. I like that. I like the fact that she challenges you as a reader. Vanessa being kind of hounded by people to get her to tell her story about what happened and I like the way Katie Russell goes, you know what, that is not for everyone. Not everyone can do this and it does make you question and challenge yourself in thinking, yes, people coming forward means that the thing that happened is less likely to happen because that person should be stopped. But at the same time, do people realise how much it takes out of someone to go forward, to have your story put out on media and then have it ripped apart by people and the fallout of that. So you do follow, not Vanessa, but she sees it, of someone who has told their story and the amount of backlash that she gets from it in terms of one, being told that she's a liar and getting threats, but also in terms of people really feeling really sorry for her, but it's all people that you don't know. And something like that is not for everyone to be able to do. And I like the way this book challenges that and goes it's okay if you can't face doing that and I think that's brilliant I haven't seen that in a book before granted I don't read much contemporary and this is the first book that I've read like this but I do think it was done really well to really make you see both sides of the story so that you can make your own opinion on what you think and that's pretty much what this whole book is even with the grooming side of things because Vanessa does see this as a love story that's happening and that is the way she has to deal with this and there's even a point in here where she's going but if it's not that you know I can't deal with that because that was my whole life and it really does make you question everything and don't get me wrong I do personally I don't see this as a full love story I understand how Vanessa sees it as a love story but there are certain things that happen in here that I'm just like no that that's not love that is being forced like there's a difference and that is my opinion on it, but somebody else reading this may have a slightly different opinion and that's what I like about this book. I like the fact that it does challenge you as you're reading it. I end up giving it a 4.5 stars. Honestly, it's really on the cusp of being a five stars. I do think it's expertly written. I think it handles some topics that just aren't handled that well in society and this does it pretty good in my opinion, but I will admit this is not something I would recommend for everybody. This is not something I'm going to happily sit down and reread, which is what my five stars normally are. Books where I've loved everything about it and would happily reread them again and again. This isn't quite that sort of book for obvious reasons of the subject matter, but I do think it is an amazing read and it is something that needs to be talked about more, especially when it's calling out like the school system and how they dealt with everything that was happening and what she then went through. I think that was horrendous, in a way almost worse than the actual abuse because of what she then had to do, which I'm not gonna explain it all because I don't want to spoil the whole book, but that part made me go, it's like, I just, I couldn't believe that that was the school's answer and I was just like, that's wrong. That's so, so wrong. And yet, that's what happened. So I do think it is a really important, impactful read. And I'm really happy I read it, even though it wasn't the easiest read at times. I do think it was an important one. But as for the rest of this reading week, I don't really know what I'm going to do. I do have my July TBR. We are on the 1st of July today. But I can't decide if I'm going to start it straight away or not. But I've got 11 books to read for the month because me and Aofi have decided that we're going to carry on buddy reading Ember Queen and we're going to start this next week. So I don't know, I'm kind of feeling like this week maybe I'll just do a bit of a mood read, see what takes my fancy, maybe some of it from my TBR, maybe not. And then properly start my TBR next week because that's when the Korean readathon happens as well. So I think I think that's what I'm gonna do. Good morning. I have a wee bit of a reading update. Obviously, it is a reading vlog. I started Crescent City by Sarah J Mars, or technically House of Earth and Blood, whatever one you wanna go for. For those of you that don't know, I am a massive Sarah J Mars fan, like complete trash for her. However, I was really nervous about this book because it's got quite a lot of swearing and I'm not a massive fan of swearing in books. And this is also an urban fantasy and unless it's an urban fantasy set in an Asian society, I don't particularly like them either. So, pretty fussy there. However, 
this isn't too bad actually, I'm pretty impressed. I listened to you guys, I did get the book after putting a poll on my Instagram saying should I pick it up, that was a 100% yes you should, and I'm glad I listened. Honestly this is really enjoyable. I've only read the first 200 pages so I'll give you a brief overview of what's happened. We are following Bryce as our main character, she's this very badass girl really, that's not surprising because Sarah J Miles does really strong female characters in her work, but we follow Bryce at the beginning of this book where there is a horrendous murder and it's very gruesome and she knows the people that's been murdered. We then fast forward two years and she's still trying to deal with everything that happened but there has been another murder and again she knows this person. So now the head archangel has decided that Bryce has to help in this investigation because clearly there is some sort of link between the two and even though she's not happy with it that's what she has to do. But she does get a very lovely bodyguard in the form of Fallen Angel Hunt and let's just say Sarah J Miles does her men pretty good, like we're all here for that. And that's kind of where I'm at. So they've just started investigating, they're just trying to find out who is behind these murders because the person they thought it was Lily isn't because he's been in prison this time so it can't have been him. There's a lot going on in here. It did feel a bit info dumpy with the first hundred pages. Because it's a brand new world, Sarah J Miles has given us a lot of information all at once on the hierarchies of that world, what's in place around there, and it's just, that was a bit info dumpy. It was a bit much, but knowing Sarah J Miles, all of that information is going to play a role in later books, either in this book or later ones, so I can kind of forgive it because I know that is her writing style, and it is a brand new world, so I do understand why we needed all of that, but I will admit some of that just went because I was like, you know what, I'm not really interested in this bit, I'm just gonna skim read this. But overall, really enjoying this so far. I'm not quite sure why I doubted it because I know I'm Sarah J Miles trash, I know that I like her writing, and she hasn't disappointed so far, I'm enjoying it. To prove that I'm even more Sarah J Miles trash, I also read and finished A Court of Frost and Starlight. So I ordered this last week before I went on my book buying ban and it was ready for collection yesterday, so I popped into my local bookstore, picked it up and then finished it that same day. I was like, I'm gonna save this, I'm gonna read half of it and then read it a bit later and no, of course not, I literally just devoured it. I'll be honest, not much happens in this book and I know that is a complaint on a lot of people's point that nothing happens in this, but I still really enjoyed it, I still gave it four stars. Honestly, I just wanted more of our characters because I love them so much and in this book we get multiple points of view, so it's not just they write, we also get points of view from Rysand, Cassian, Moore, even Nesta, and it's really nice to see how they're all dealing with the after effects of the war. So we have some of them that are moving on and re building and other characters that really aren't doing so well and I liked that, I liked seeing both sides of dealing with the after effects of war. There is no action in this unless you count the smut because I certainly do. Sarah J Miles does smut good and that is yeah another reason why I'm here for it. She does her characters well, her romance is even better, I enjoyed this. Plus this is bridging the gap between A Court of Wings and Ruin and A Court of Silver Fire and we do actually get a sneak peek into that book in here which I really really enjoy. So for me I'm really pleased I read this because it does give you a bit of insight into how Nesta is and the reason for why the next book is happening so you do see that but I don't think you strictly necessarily need to read this before going into her new book that comes out in January. So it's turned into another Sarah J Miles week. Am I surprised? Not really. I'm really in a Sarah J Miles mood and I'm enjoying it. But next week's reading week is rammed, absolutely rammed. I have so many books to read next week, so I have to finish Crescent City by Monday, which gives me three days, but I'm working today and tomorrow, and I still have quite a lot of this book to go. So is that gonna happen? Who knows? Potentially, if I manage to read a decent chunk this evening and then also Sunday, but I don't tend to read that much on a Saturday, so... I don't know, was this the smartest move in picking this book up this week? No, it really wasn't, but do I care? No, because I'm enjoying it. Good evening, I wanted to do a quick update to let you guys know my future YouTube plans because with me being back at work, even though it is only four days a week, I am finding it a bit of a struggle to get three videos a week done every week. 
So from July, I'm going to be cutting it down to two videos a week. So my weekly vlogs will be coming out on Thursdays and my usual Sunday videos will stay in place. So it's just changing. So instead of Wednesday, Friday and Sunday, it's going to be a Thursday and a Sunday. Just wanted to let you guys know of that little update. But for this evening, my plans is this to chill out, read a bit more of Crescent City, and eat a big old bar of chocolate that my little brother just bought me, which was really sweet. He just came into my room and he was like, here, I have a present, and that was really nice. So I'm gonna go enjoy my evening. I have work again tomorrow, and we'll see how much more of this book I get read. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't stopped thinking about it. It's like, I'm not wanting to sleep because I'm wanting to read. When I'm at work, I'm thinking about my book. It's just, it's a good book. I'm enjoying it so much more than what I thought I would. It's been a rather productive Sunday morning actually. I was gonna say lazy but actually no because it's almost 12 o'clock but I've already done my yoga, edited a video, well edited part of this vlog and also uploaded another video which not a bad Sunday morning. I also wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone that watched my July TBR game video. We are at, as of right now, 298 views, which is amazing. I cannot believe that. I am so shocked. So thank you to everybody that watched that video, that has liked that video, and welcome to everyone that's new. I've had a few new subscribers and just thank you. It's amazing if a little bit unbelievable so yes thank you but crescent city oh my god guys oh my god i am loving this there is a part in this which isn't a spoiler so i'm gonna talk about it but we have hunt looking for some soap and ended up finding some sparkly unicorns that bryce collects and uh, I loved it, I absolutely loved it, and I know it's just such a silly thing to love, but she has this collection of unicorns that are like sparkly and they've all got their own names and everything, and it was so cute. I just, I loved it, especially because I love unicorns and I actually have little collectibles. So I got these from Thailand. So this is one of them, and that's the other. And this one, and this one. Like, I love them and so when they're in the book and Bryce is explaining well yeah you know I collect these and everything and it's just one of my favourite parts so far and that's so sad but I'm enjoying it. I've also heard a lot of people say how they find House of Earth and Blood a bit too long that there's probably a few things that didn't need to be in the book but I'm actually enjoying all of it but then to be fair whenever anybody goes oh this is quite boring in these parts I never find it boring because I just love character interactions so much especially when they're just like chatting and you're just seeing parts of their life I don't know I just Maybe I'm a boring person, but I really like it. I am just over halfway, so I don't know if I'm actually gonna get this finished up today, but even if I don't, I don't really care. I've enjoyed it a lot, and we'll just see how much more I get read today. I may edit another video today, but I've had a headache, and I've had this headache for four days straight, where it's just been constant. I wake up with it, I go to bed with it, and it's just, it's a bit much, so I may not edit, it depends. If this can settle, then potentially but if not then I don't know and it was also impacting my reading because if you've ever tried reading with a headache you know how just frustrating that is so I'm hoping that I can spend at least a few hours getting some of this read because I'm enjoying it it's so much fun I've just finished Crescent City oh my god you guys I want to reread it like right now like right now and I can't because it's the Korean readathon next week so I know I can't but uh, this was amazing I had so many reservations about this book like so so many I'd put off buying it for so long and oh my god this was amazing this is actually a five star read for me the first five star read for Sarah J Miles from from me personally I think Honestly, rereading the Throne of Glass series, potentially we could have had one or two books in there that were five stars. But out of the rereads of A Court of Thorns and Roses and this, this is just amazing. It's so, so good. And uh, the twists and turns in this book I love. It had me guessing right up until the end who actually committed this murder and was causing all this havoc. And... Uh, 
it was just so good. It had me in floods of tears at the end, it had me laughing, it just, it was just so, so good and ugh. Oh, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing and I don't know why I had so many reservations because the hype is all deserved. I've loved it. My only disappointment in this book would be that every time we were going to get a smut scene from Hunt and Bryce, it then just didn't happen. And I'm just like, every single time I was like, come on guys, come on, make this happen. So yeah, I'm invested. I loved it. I thought it was amazing and I'm gonna have to get the next one when it comes out and I'm a bit upset that it's not already out. But no, honestly, I really recommend this book. If you enjoy Sarah J Mars, then definitely give this a try because it was amazing. And with this being finished, I am going to finish my weekly vlog here. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. All my social media links to my Instagram, Goodreads and Twitter will be linked below. Let me know if you've actually read Crescent City and what you thought of it. I know there has been some polarising views on the book so do let me know. But until then, I'll see you in the next video.